Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our candlelight Lord's Supper service to commemorate the conclusion of the season of Advent and to bring us into Christmas. Over the last four Sunday mornings, we have talked and sung and reflected upon the hope and the peace and the joy and the love which are ours in Christ. We've read from the book of Isaiah to read the prophecies about that hope which would be ours and that peace and that joy and that love which would be ours when God sent his Messiah. It's during this service that we do the work of connecting the sending of God's Son, the birth of Jesus, with why that sending ultimately matters. It's in this service that we connect the manger to the cross, the birth of Christ to the death and the resurrection of Christ. So here's how this will work this evening. You're not going to get one message from me. You're going to get four messages from me. But before you go marching out the door at that announcement, there'll be many messages. Rather than one 20, 25, 30 minute message, you'll get four short reflections on these Advent themes of hope and peace and joy and love. At the conclusion of these messages and the music that accompanies them, we'll take the Lord's Supper together. We'll do this in remembrance of our Lord and Savior. And then, at the end of the service, this will bring us into our celebration of Christmas. So I'm glad that you're here today. I'm grateful for your presence, both those of you who are here in person, as well as those who are participating from home through the live stream. And I want to begin by reading to you from Isaiah chapter 9, verse 2. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. Christ's birth brings us hope. Hope is part of the story of Jesus' birth. Because the birth of Christ is an announcement to a weary world that God is doing something new. That God is bringing forth something which had not yet been seen. That God is fulfilling the promises that he had made to his people. And so there is hope in the birth of Jesus. But there's hope also in the life of of Jesus. Each person who came in contact with the Savior drew from that experience some measure of hope. For those who had once seen God as distant, those who had once seen God as one who cared for his people, perhaps, but not for them, Jesus was an announcement that there was hope for all. Not just the Israelite, not just the priest, not just the Levite, but the Samaritan and the leper. There's hope in Christ's birth, there's hope in his life, and yes, there is even hope in the death of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because from that death, from that sacrifice, we are recipients of eternal life in Christ. Because of what Jesus did on the cross, we can know fellowship with God the Father. The story of Jesus, from manger to cross, is a story of hope. It's a reminder that God is with us. Thank you.
stand with me as we sing O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel, that mourns in of Jesus is a story of hope, and it is also a story of peace. Listen to these words again from the book of Isaiah, chapter 9, verses 6 and 7. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice 
and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Peace is part of the story of Jesus' birth. When the announcement came to shepherds watching in the field by night, the announcement from a heavenly host of angels that the Christ, the Messiah, was born, the angels rejoiced, singing glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace, goodwill to men. The announcement that Christ was born was an announcement that peace had come. And peace was not just a part of the story of Jesus' birth, but a part of the story of his life, of his ministry. Blessed are the peacemakers, Jesus said, for they shall be called children of God. You've heard it said, Jesus told his disciples, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, but I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Even when the guards came to arrest Jesus in the garden to lead him to his false trial, to his mockery, to his crucifixion. When one of the Lord's disciples lashed out in violence, cut off the ear of one of the guards, Jesus reached out with a healing touch and rebuked his disciple, reminding him that those who live by the sword will die by the sword. And so peace is part also of the story of the death of Jesus. Jesus was led, Scripture tells us, like a lamb to slaughter. He did not raise his voice. He did not call down the legion of angels that were at his disposal. And because of his death on the cross, Scripture reminds us that we are justified by faith and that we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. From manger to cross, the story of Jesus is a story of peace.
There is joy in the story of Christ. Listen to these words from Isaiah chapter 35, verses 5 and 6. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer, and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. For waters shall break forth in the wilderness, and streams in the desert. There was joy the night Jesus was born. The joy of the Holy Family, of Mary, and of Joseph. That joy of any new parent mixed with the awesome responsibility of bringing into the world and raising the very Son of God. The joy of the shepherds the first to receive this good news of great joy, which would be for all people, that unto them was born that very day in the city of David, a Savior who was Christ the Lord. The shepherds rejoiced at this news. And along with these lowly shepherds, so too did the very host of heaven rejoice that the word had become flesh, to live among you and I. There was joy at the birth of Christ. And there was joy in the life of Christ. So many who came in contact with Jesus experienced what the prophet foretold. The eyes of the blind were opened. The tongues of the mute uttered words. The diseased received their healing, and even the dead arose. There was joy in the life of Jesus. And even from that darkest day, even at the death of Jesus Christ, we today draw some measure 
of joy. For from that great tragedy, from that horrific crime, because of the crucifixion, we have eternal life with God our Father. Because of what Jesus did on the cross, our joy is made complete. The story of Jesus, from manger to cross, is a story of joy. Finally, the story of Jesus is a story of love. You heard this verse read this morning. I ask you to hear it again now. Isaiah 53, verse 5. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole. And by his bruises, we are healed. We see the love of God first at the birth of Jesus, in the sending of his Son for us, in that act of Jesus giving up the glories of heaven to dwell among us, emptying himself on our behalf. We see God's love at the birth of Jesus. And in every action Jesus took in his life, we continue to see that love. In every miracle, in every teaching, in every small act of compassion, we see in Jesus the love of a God that extends to the disciple, to the Pharisee, but also to the stranger, to the leper. We see that in Jesus, there truly is good news for all. News that God loves all whom he has created. We see the love of God at the birth of Jesus. We see it in the life of Jesus. But I trust that we see the love of God in its fullest measure in the death of our Lord Jesus Christ. That sacrificial act of Jesus laying down his life 
so that we might know eternal life with God. Jesus giving everything he had to give so that we might know fellowship with God, so that we might be reconciled to our Father. Jesus endured the unendurable so that we might know the hope and the peace and the joy, but most especially the love of God. The story of Jesus from manger to cross is a story of God's love for us. In just a moment, we will observe this act of God's love for us in remembrance of what Jesus did on that cross. We will take the Lord's Supper together. We will take the bread representing the body of Jesus. We'll drink from the cup representing the blood of Jesus. We'll remember as our Lord commanded us to do. We'll reflect. We'll pray. And in doing so, we will know that there is hope, that there is peace, that there is joy, that there is love in our Lord Jesus Christ. I'll light our fourth candle, the candle of love, and then I want to invite Mike Ford, our chairman of deacons, to come forward and bring a prayer for the taking of the Lord's Supper.
We've spoken about that hope which is ours in Christ, that peace which is ours in Christ, that joy which is ours in Christ, and that love which is ours in Christ. In his birth, in his life, and ultimately in his death. So we come now to this moment where we remember that Jesus did give all that he had to give for us. That Jesus gave his body that we might know salvation. That Jesus gave his blood that we might know life with God. So I invite you now to take the bread into your hand to remember along with me that Jesus told his disciples, even as he tells us today, that this is my body given for you. So do this in remembrance of me. Taking next the cup, Jesus gave us another reminder of what it is he was about to give on our behalf. This, he said, is the new covenant in my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. Would you pray with me? Lord God, we thank you today. We thank you for the grace which you bestowed upon us. We thank you that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. We thank you that he shed his blood, that he gave his body, that we might be saved, that we might know eternal life with you. And so, Lord, in this season, this Advent season, as we draw closer and closer to the celebration of Christmas Day, closer and closer to the commemoration of your son's birth, may we remember, especially tonight, why that birth matters. That you sent your son to live and to die and to rise again. That we might have life. Thank you for the precious gift of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's in his name that I pray. Amen. There remains one more candle to be lit, the Christ candle. Traditionally, this candle is saved for Christmas Day, or in our case, Christmas Eve. And rest assured, we will light the candle here in a few days on Christmas Eve. But for tonight, having taken the supper, having told the story of Jesus, from Bethlehem to Calvary, from manger to cross. I'm reminded as I look around at these candles and these lights that Jesus told us two things. First, he said, 
I am the light of the world. That Jesus is the one in whom we have hope and peace and joy and love. Jesus is the light of the world that brings us these things even in times of darkness. But he said a second thing as well. Speaking to his disciples, speaking to us, he said also, you are the light of the world. That we are called, having received salvation, having received hope, and peace, and joy, and love. We are called then to share these with a weary world. So what we'll do at this time, I'll light this middle candle, this Christ candle, and then we will each receive our own light from this candle representing Christ. Hopefully you got one of those white candles at the back when you entered. If not, you'll have a moment here in just a sec to sneak back there and grab one. I want to invite first the wings here to head to the back and then down the center aisle with their candle. After these winged sections, then, then here in the middle, beginning from the back, we'll come forward. Take your candle. Receive your own light from the light of Christ. Once we've all got our own light to shine, we'll conclude with the singing of one final hymn. Jesus is the light of the world. You, the body of Christ, are the light of the world. Here. 
teach us there's a better way to live. Oh, and with every flame that burns, we must somehow learn that love's the greatest gift that we could ever give. Light a candle, light the dark, light the world, light a heart or two. Light a candle for me, I'll light a candle. Stand with me, please.